The countries around the world are reporting shortages of protective equipment like face masks, not only for medical staff, but also for ordinary people. But one country that's avoided this is Taiwan. So how do they do it? And could their approach be uh, emulated by others? DW's Phoebe Kong reports from Taipei. This handmade face mask cover can be washed and reused for a day or two amid shortages. Like for so many others here, face masks have become a necessity in Josie's everyday life. The virus will spread through droplets. I have to take a bus to my office every day, so it's more than one hour that I um, to share the same space with more than 30 people. It's, it made me feel unsafe too without wearing a mask. While getting a mask can be no easy task in many parts of the world, it's another story here in Taiwan. To ensure the safety of its population of 23 million, Taiwan imposed an export ban on surgical masks as early as January. The government then began rationing masks to three per person per week and soon after made them available online. Now Josie can place an order for face masks with an app. Purchase history is recorded by her national health insurance card so that it can be verified before sales. For those who don't want to order online, software developer Kyung Fin John has developed a real-time mask map to track face mask stocks in pharmacies. People can check their availability before heading out. This is among the dozens of online tools that have mushroomed on the island during the epidemic, an exhibition of public-private partnership and mutual trust. It's not difficult to create such a map, but the key to the successful rationing system is that the government is willing to share its data with us. Taiwan's well-established healthcare system is our advantage. The data of over 6,000 pharmacies across the country has already been connected to the official database. It's enormously beneficial once the data is open to society. Panic can be eased as a result. By collaborating with other programmers across East Asia, his map was also adapted into a Korean version to solve a similar problem facing South Korea. Ten days after placing the order, Josie picks up her surgical masks at a convenience store. It saves my time. People can buy masks in a really fair price. You can buy three masks for less than one euro, and this is really cheap. And it's like the social equality for us. You can achieve, uh, like, the health is the right for everyone, and you can have the mask to protect yourself. And that is invaluable in these difficult times. Taiwan's healthcare system and the apps that serve it not only help provide masks, but much needed comfort and stability. Well, that report was uh, filed by DW's uh, Phoebe Kong, who joins me now from Taiwan's capital, Taipei. Welcome, uh, Phoebe. Um, is there government advice there about the wearing of masks, or is this something that uh, people have just uh, done for themselves? Well, recently, Taiwan government has ramped up the mask wearing policies because um, there is a rapid surge of imported cases on the island. The island has now reported over 300 uh, um, infections confirmed cases now. So um, the government is now requiring the citizens to wear a mask um, uh, while they're staying indoors and taking public transport. And this can be done because um, uh, uh, a steady supply of the mask can be uh, guaranteed on the island that uh, Taiwan can now manufacture 10 million masks a day on its own. And not only Taiwan can cater to its domestic demand, but also uh, Taiwan is now trying to help other countries in uh, other parts of the world. Um, the government just announced yesterday that they will donate 10 million masks to uh, the most needed countries, uh, including the US and Europe. And 7 million of masks will go to the Europe to help medical workers over there. And, and three masks for less than a euro seems like a very good price. Um, were there instances of people trying to profiteer from this situation? No, um, it like uh, didn't happen in Taiwan because Taiwan government has imposed stringent measures on controlling the price of the mask uh, from the very beginning of the outbreak. That um, there is um, merchants and merchants are not allowed to sell masks uh, or to boost its price; otherwise, they would be fined or prosecuted. 
And uh, so this is one of the vigorous measures that um, the government is trying to uh, stabilize the price of the mask. This is because this is the most needed uh, uh, supplies during a pandemic. And uh, shortly afterwards, all mask, uh, all medical products are centrally managed by the government. So um, the government is monitoring um, the, the whole production line of the mask from manufacturing distribution to sales. It's under monitor and surveillance of the uh, government. So um, um, uh, simply, there is no free market of masks in Taiwan right now. And Taiwan has been praised for its early action in this uh, pandemic. Just talk us briefly through what authorities did. The most difficult, um, the most critical measures uh, to control the pandemic is that uh, Taiwan has imposed very early uh, border control. Like back in January, Taiwan has um, cut off, um, drastically cut off the flight between mainland China and Taiwan, and uh, also to impose uh, travel restrictions to certain type of people. So right now, um, all foreign visitors without a residence certificate are now banned from entry. And the government is also um, uh, restricting the overseas travel of certain essential uh, personnel, including medics and military. So they are not allowed to travel overseas. And also students and teachers uh, from right. high schools and below, they're not allowed to leave the country right now. So this is a measure um, in a bit to cope with the pandemic. Good talking to you. Thank you for that. Uh, Phoebe Kong in Taipei.